Hello. Um, today I'm going to be working on transferring my initial pattern, my initial noodlings, to some uh, cardstock, and uh, just taped. Don't didn't have a paper the size of my pattern. So I mean, kind of like what I did with my initial draft pattern. I taped a bunch of pieces together and cut out a basic square. And I'm going to be using a lead light pad for doing the transfer. And it's a pretty handy tool to have. Um, I think this one was like 140, 150 bucks, something like that. Um, if you don't have the cash for it, then holding a pattern to a lit window, uh, lit from behind by the sun will do the trick too. Uh, but uh, it's a really nice little tool. But before I go on, I think I mentioned last time I had something in my kiln. And it was a... It is, not was, it's still in one piece, which is a good thing. <clears throat> um, a pattern melt. And I had the option of making either the organic side the quote-unquote front or the more geometric side the front and this is how it came out and I think it came out uh, pretty good and what I did was I uh, took a tip from the bullseye website and uh, in order to prevent uh, devitrification of the piece while I was trying to um, fire polish it. Well, I originally I was really good at pie fire polish, but this is ah, I still need to clean this off. But this was the original um, size I'd fused face up, and this is made out of a combination of bullseye and Wismach glasses. Now the thing is, with Wismach, it's cheap, but it tends to devitrify pretty bad. So uh, I did some cleaning up here just to get it off, so it doesn't look totally scuzzy. But then I followed the advice on the Bullseye website and sifted a layer of clear powder and then took it to almost to a almost a full fuse. Um, I think it was uh, 1435. So and uh, really formed a nice little cap, a clear cap over this and I think it came out uh, pretty darn good. Uh, once I get uh, once I get the kiln wash off the back of this, and I'll have to soak this in uh, vinegar. To do that, uh, I'll probably end up slumping this. And then, just as a precaution, I'll just let the piece age and see what happens. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is in some ways, this is actually kind of an experiment. Um, because of, uh, I've heard rumblings here and there of people having compatibility problems with Wismach glass and bullseye. And so uh, I thought I'd just give it another shot um, because I have uh, I did a pot melt a long time ago. It was actually the first pot melt I did and I think I just may have screwed it up with the anneal, but that uh, ended up thermal shocking. So I thought, okay, let me try uh, mixing the two together, together again and uh, seeing what happens. So uh, like I said, uh, once I get the kiln wash off here, I'm gonna slump this thing into a bowl and just kind of set it in the shelf and see what happens. So if it lasts a couple of months, then I think I'm probably good to um, sell it. So uh, knock on wood. So yeah, okay. Well, let me go on and uh, trace my trace my design. And I've got the cardstock and the original design taped together here so they kind of stays in the same position so one doesn't slide uh, underneath the other uh, as I'm working. So I'm kind of wondering whether maybe I should put something over on the other side just for safety measure. Let me do that. Let me do that just to be sure. Okay. Oops, and I actually bumped on my little light pad. So, uh, and I don't know how well this is going to come out because I'm probably screwing with my white balance big time. Yeah. 
Okay, you came on before. There we go. Nice and bright. Okay. So, let me go ahead and trace the boundaries on here just so I have my, just so I know where my boundary is. And again, like I did with my other video where I'm doing something repetitive, I will just play some sort of ambient noise underneath. Um, so, okay. And I'll first copy the pattern in pencil, because if I make mistakes, I can go ahead and erase them. But then after that, I will use Sharpie marker and uh, any pieces of this design that are going to get subdivided. I mean, some of these may be just whole pieces here with fused glass stuff on top. Things. Not sure what yet. Um, so... Yeah, I'll use a Sharpie marker, and then when I cut these pieces out, I will cut on the inside ends of the Sharpie because I want a little gap between the pieces for uh, uh, for when uh, I do the grouting because I don't want them fitting tightly together. I'll need to have some space for the uh, grout, so uh, that's what I'm going to do. And you get to watch me do this. second this just isn't we switch modes here and see if this how this looks on auto rather than have this damn thing on I believe I forgot to turn this darn thing on. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I had it on. Okay, well, sorry about that. I've only got part of this, what I'm doing here, but uh, I'll have to review my video. Okay, well, I've got this. I've already got some ideas what I want to do in one section here. Um, but I want to try to come up with some a consistent theme for all the other voids in here. So uh, I'll have to give that more thought. But uh, I think that's going to be it. For this video, uh, next time I hope to have more of a design in place. Um, so uh, then I'll probably start cutting these pieces out and start cutting glass for this. So uh, anyway, that's it for now. You know what? I was experimenting with using the... Uh, have the white balance adjusted in manual mode and I wanted to see how it would look in automatic through the viewing screen so I switched it on automatic while it was recording and I didn't notice it stopped recording. So uh, actually I don't think uh, oh shoot I don't know I don't think you missed too much but uh, anyway sorry about that.